Hi everyone. My name is Nicole and this is Tech Friday with Home Smart Encore. Today we're going to talk about the new Authenisign. They have updated the interface, try to make it a little more streamlined and user friendly. So you would go to your LVR dashboard and you would click on the transaction desk icon. From there, you have several ways of starting a new signing. You can go to the main menu on the left, and just for your information, if you were to open this little hamburger here, the three green lines at the top, that would tell you what each of these icons are for. So the second one is a pen icon, and it's for signings. You can access signings that way. This would be all the signings that you have currently in your system and you would hit the Add button to create a new um, signing. It gives you the choice of the AuthentiSign Classic, or the old version, and the new AuthentiSign. If you click on the new AuthentiSign, you are going to put the signing name. Um, so usually we kind of, I think the system defaults to naming it with whatever form you're using. So let's say you're sending over a duties owed, but you might want to put um, somebody's name on that as well. So let's say I am going to have somebody with last name Hines. I'm setting in the duties owed and I want to link that to a property. So I'm going to pick the property that I want to link it to and I'm going to hit save. From here you get to add a document or a form. Okay, so that's just one way to get in. Let's go back out. So from the pen in the left menu, you could have accessed AuthentiSign, but we want to get back to the main dashboard now. Um, main dashboard, here we go. There's also an AuthentiSign widget. Um, there's two types of widgets. There's the blue, short, like very um, small widget, and then there's the bigger widget, which kind of lets you see through the window there what signings you have in there and what status they're in. You could click right here to go to signings or you could click here and again you would pick new AuthentiSign, name it, and it would take you right into the signing. Okay. Now let's say though most of us I think start a signing usually from when we're in the transaction. So you would hit on this little house icon again, that's your transactions. Click on the house Click on the transaction that you are working in right at that moment. And from here, they have um, given us widgets on the, our transaction dashboard as well now. So again, I could click the widget for AuthentiSign. I could go to the right as opposed to the left. That is, if I have this hamburger open on the right. And click on the signings um, word on the menu. That would keep us in the transaction. Anything on the right side that I click on is going to keep me in the transaction. But if I click on the left, I'm going out of the transaction, okay? Very important to remember that so you don't get frustrated. So another way that I could start um, assigning, which is the way I normally do it, is I would go to my forms or my documents. But if I click on forms and I have put a template into my transaction, all my forms will already be here. Otherwise, you could, of course, add a form. But my forms are already in here. I had named this signing duties owed. So I could go right here to the three dots and I could say send to AuthentiSign. That's one way I would start a transaction going through forms, same way through documents. Or I could click on the circle and I could click a couple documents at one time or I could just click one and that puts those documents in this basket here. So now I could click on the basket and here's the three documents I just clicked and here is that symbol for AuthentiSign again. And I'm going to go to the new AuthentiSign. Okay. So now we're in a signing and the first um, item that it's going to take you to for that signing is called signers. Um, so when you 
go to when you're on signers let's click that again you can select signing order I, the only time I would recommend that is if you're having the broker sign something you want him to sign after everybody else has signed but if you just have like a husband and wife signing paperwork or anybody any two people or three people that are buying a house I don't think it matters so much the signing order but I leave that to you and participants that's the important part <laughs> so you might be adding yourself you might be um, adding just your clients which I'm gonna do right here I am gonna search um, Michael Hines he is gonna be the seller here so I've got Michael set up and now um, the next next um, like icon that you would go to would be docs and we have our three documents in here already if I didn't have all the documents in let's say I had opened up the signing with just one document but I wanted to add another here is where I could do that I could add the document from right here okay and it's showing me all the documents in that transaction and I could add from here or I could even um, delete documents let's see here let me hit on that consent to act Let's see, replace file, remove file. So you could delete from this area as well, okay? So that was docs. Tools are where we have all of our signing tools or markup tools. But I wanna do this the easiest way possible and the fastest way. So I don't wanna sit here and put all the signatures where they belong. I wanna use layouts. Now you cannot open layouts or get it to work rather until you have a signer in your program okay so we already have a signer so I'm gonna to go to layout options and I'm gonna to go to apply layouts for each document I have in there it'll ask me what layout I want to use I really wish they would have just auto populated this for us automatically or have a setting that we could do it where we don't have to do it for each transaction but I did talk to transaction desk and that is not available at this time so duties owed listing side I want to apply that layout to this document. I want these to match. The consent to act. I want to go to the consent to act layout. Seems rather obvious, right? <laughs> and you want them to match. Exclusive authorization and right to sell the listing agreement. Again, I want to make sure I'm getting the exact same Broker exchange or okay there we go got it so there we go and now I'm going to put assign signature layouts and there we go it has put in for me all the spots that my seller should sign okay so we want to work smarter not harder right okay now there's a few things I did not fill out here so I can use markup to fill these things out that I hadn't filled out yet. Um, move that right down there on the line. And let me put my license number in. And let's see, I've got my client in there. I've got marked as a seller, broker. Now, when we get down to this licensee acting for both parties, the, your client has to pick whether you may or may not act for both parties. and that including your client <laughs> so I like to highlight this or or this whole thing and and I put in a little note to them when I send them the email that says please only initial one side okay so I am going to go to markup again down here I'm gonna click on highlight and I am gonna highlight this so that they understand that I only want them to click one of those okay I could have also let me see if I can get rid of this delete that I could have also just highlighted the or so whatever way you're more comfortable with that's what you want to do okay um, if you notice these signatures that went in when it auto um, auto layout you know put the layout in for us um, auto populated the layout it put in the date and the time you know the auto date and time like it'll fill that in once the client signs now let's see we've got this all is filled in it looks like great 
auto date and time are there. So you just might want to check to make sure, you know, nothing got messed up. Okay, here's our contract. Now there will be some things you have to fill out still. And remember, um, you can do that yourself from this point. You could have done it in markup in the forms, but if you didn't, don't panic because you can do it here. Let's see. It's a little hard to get the room there. but um, So anyhow, you see, you know, just like regular markup, you want to make sure you've got everything filled in for your client. This property does or does not contain smart technology. Now, if this is something you don't know the answer to and you want your client to fill it out, you can put it, oops, where'd the checkbox go? There it is. You can put a checkbox here. Ah, there it is. Slid away. Checkbox there. The problem is sometimes clients go through and check everything. So you want to let them know, please only click the checkboxes that are accurate to your situation. Okay. Um, here, solar system power. Do this, the customer have any of these items? I am going to put checkboxes there. Let them tell me, right? Unless you have been on the phone with them and gone over all this already. And if you already know the answers, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea, then you would fill it in. Okay? But this is how you use AuthentiSign. That's really what we're trying to do is to show you how these different tools work. Um, let's keep going here. If you wanted the client to write something in. Um, this is something we usually write though. We And actually I don't need to write anything there because we usually drop it into escrow. But if you wanted the client to write something, you would use this box. If you wanted to write something in yourself, again, you'd go to the markup. But I happen to know we are going to deposit the money into escrow. So I am just going to use a markup here. I'm going to put a capital X. And let's see if I can make this small so I can fit it right over that box. There we go. Like that. So that's kind of a lot of work. Like you're better off filling it up in your forms first. But these tools are here to use again. Okay. Now. I'm not going to go through and fill all this little stuff in because I normally would have done this in forms. But I wanted you to see how to do the signing and how to um, set it up to send to your client. I could have put um, our broker in here and had it go to him after the client signed. But I haven't. I can always set up another signing to do that. Let's see. Let's keep going. Okay. There are some other things I'd like to show you on the seller's real property disclosure. There's some interesting um, things you can do with the layout. But for right now, this is all we need on this one. So we have gotten to, we already did layouts, and then we went back up to tools. I think they should have layouts before tools, but they don't. Um, we have options here. There's nothing in here that I choose to use for an options, but you can take a look at these and see you know, if there's anything um, that you like. I don't set an expiration date for my signings. I've never had a reason to, but you might want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to hit next. Finalize the signing setup. Customize the invite. I am going to tell my client, um, hi, Michael. Oops, I am sending you some forms that need signatures, please note on the duties owed, I need you to select may or may not, but not both of them.
also, because I had left things for them to check, please only check the boxes on the listing agreement for things that pertain to your home. Okay, and my signature will automatically go on this because my signature is already set up in Transaction Desk. So it'll um, come with my signature on it. Okay, I'm going to hit Save. I don't want to send it yet um, because I just realized there was something I wanted to show you in here. One thing that I did want to point out, um, if you're using checkboxes for your client to check, like if you were putting in your own text box and putting an X in and putting it wherever you want, that's fine. But if you're actually sending a signing with checkboxes for the client to check, you want to make sure click that you click on the checkbox and make sure that it is not showing as required. That would be required. That would be not required. And you can set the not required, set it as a default setting. Because if you don't do that, they're forced to click every box that you have marked and you were probably intending to mark it optional. Okay, so just want to make sure that everybody understands that. Okay, so we're going to hit next. And let me see if it held my custom invite. It did. Perfect. So you can actually write your invite. If you have to go back and fix something, it's still held. And now let's hit send. Okay. So that was the duty zone. Okay. So let's take a look now at our... Um, Seller's Real Property Disclosure, because that's a really difficult form sometimes to do online. And again, I would have, this one we don't want to fill out much at all. You don't want to do anything that you don't have to do. Um, you could probably put the property address in, but I would really say that is it, because this is a form that if the seller lies on this form, you don't want to be any part of it. You know what I mean? You don't want to any, you don't want to incriminate yourself and make it look like you filled it out for him, okay? So I am just going to hit signing here. All I have is the address. I'm going to hit send it to sign, authentic sign. And now that I'm in authentic sign, again, I'm going to pick a participant. Now this one, really, they did a beautiful job on the layout because this is so difficult. They did a beautiful job on the layout, but they missed this top part. So let me show you. Let's go over here to Layouts, Layout Options, Apply Layouts. And again, we want to pick the form with the exact same name, Seller's Real Property Disclosure, and this was, um, there is only one in here, thank goodness. This was just revised in September of 2021. Look at the beautiful job they did with all this radio buttons. So a client can only check one of these. They can't check all three on any given line. So that makes it so much easier for them to fill it in. Um, and I'm jumping ahead. I'm mixing, missing the top section on purpose right now. But I want you to see all these radio buttons they put in. They did a beautiful job. Right here, this box is for them to explain anything they need to explain if they've checked that something's wrong. They should have this box stretched out. They did not. So do stretch it out. Okay? That way, if your client needs room to write, um, you know, they'll have a lot of room. I tried writing in it when it was small and going over and you can't see any of it when you, you know, it, it's all hidden. So you do want to stretch this out. Okay. It does not have to be required. Um, did you see, I'm in the text box and do you see how there's this required button? If there's nothing wrong with the property, there's nothing for him to explain. So you do not need to have required checked. Now let's go, let me get out of this. And let's go back up to the top. 
Because this area, I don't even want to say if this client, if, what if the client's not currently living in the property? I only know what they tell me. So I don't know if they really truly never live there or not. So I don't want to fill this out. I want to let the client do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the auto date. When you click here, it, the auto date popped up right up here. So I'm going to move that down here. And now I have to decide how I'm doing these guys. And um, what we decided was the best thing to do was to use the checkbox. I called Transaction Desk and talked to them. And they said to use the checkbox. And I'm going to click it again. I'm going to put it over here. Now they could click both. I don't want them to though. Okay. So here's the checkbox group. We are going to put not required. You know, we don't want required checked. Let's check this guy uncheck it. So whichever one the client checks is what's going to show. They are to ignore the other one, you know, so just have them check. You just maybe in your message to them in your invitation, say, please, um, at the top when it says, if you current, have you, do you currently occupy or have you ever occupied the property? Only check yes or no. And this area right here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put check boxes. I wish they would have done this for us because it's a little bit tedious. But I would rather do this than fill it out for them. Okay. And let's get the other one. And now let me see here. I want to make sure all of these are not required. And that other line that's there. I want to give them an opportunity to write something in there in case they want to. So I am going to go to the text box markup. Put this right here. And again, I want to make that. Oh, good. It has no required setting. Perfect. So if the client were to pick other and they were to explain in here, that's fine. You know, whatever, however the client feels it's best filled out. Okay. Um, all of the initials showed up in the right spots. Let's see here. We should have a signature at the bottom. We And the date is over here. We are good. So that is something to remember when you add something to a form. Do go and check and make sure that um, you have it as, you know, not required. Now, look, I can save this as a default setting. Um, let me see something here. Let me go to layouts again. Layout options. Nope. I was trying to see if I could save this. Let's go here. I might click on this box and I might put save as a default setting. So when I put in a checkbox, it automatically will default to not required. Okay, I think I like that idea better. And if I put this right here, okay, that's already not required. So we're good. This is it. I'm done with this guy. So I'm going to hit next. I'm going to customize the invite. Hi, Michael. I am sending over the seller's real property disclosure for you to fill out. Please, oh, let's see, at the top, I'm going to say at the top portion, you will see some questions about how you it, about ownership and occupying the property please only check what applies to you the list of questions about features of the property do need some answer on each line.
And again, I don't have to sign it because my signature will automatically go on that. And let me hit save and I am going to send. Okay, so that's it's a pretty um, nice interface. Um, there is one other thing I'd like to point out. So let's say if we went into my transaction and I want to see what status my signing is in. I'm going to click on signings and I am going to, it was the sellers, well actually I sent the duties out a while ago. Um, they are both in here. If my computer had defaulted to showing me the classic view or of the classic signings, the older version, my new signings I just did would not show up. This one was done on September 24th. This one was done on September 8th. So if you don't see the signings you just did, it's probably because you didn't click on new and click on new. And then we can actually view the status of those signings. Oh, he approved it. How cute. Okay. And because obviously it's not really selling anything. <laughs> approved. Love it. Okay. So that's all there is today. I do have um, some slides. I'll be sending to you those to you. Uh, I'll be sending out the slides to those of you that attended and um, hope to see you next Tech Friday. Thank you. Bye-bye.